This is lesson one, some problems from the problem set, and it's a continuation from the lecture video where I did one or two in there. So uh, let's go ahead and look at one like uh, number 14, and it gives us three fifths plus one eighth plus one eighth. Okay, so what we have to do first of all is before we add anything, we have to have common denominators. Well, we already have a common denominator there, so we can add those two. It's the one, the three-fifths that we can't do anything to yet. Now we have this here that we have to find common denominators for. So a common denominator for both 8 and 5. So, um, like I said in the lecture, one of the easiest ways to do it when you're dealing with small numbers is just start putting the factors of 8 down just put a few of them on there and then we'll do our fives and then when we run into a common number we stop okay so we have a 40 there and a 40 there so that's our common denominator so what did we multiply 5 by to get a 40. Well, 5 times 8 is 40. So we're going to change that 5 to a 40. And we multiplied 5 times 8 to get 40, so we have to multiply this 3 times 8. So therefore, this fraction and this fraction are the same thing. Alright, so now we're going to change our two 8s. We're going to change that 8 to a 40. What did we change the 8? Where did we multiply the 8 by to get it to a 40? A 5. So now we're going to have to multiply the 2 times 5. And that's our new group of fractions. We add those together and uh, we will get our, our answer then. Now when you're doing these, remember when we get 34 over 40, that when these two are both even numbers, they can be reduced. So we'll take half of 34, half of 40, and we get 17 over 20. And that cannot be reduced any further because 17 is a prime number, which means we can't reduce it. So this one is number 24, and we're subtracting. So again, I'm going to put it in this vertical form. And 6 and 5 eighths. And since we're subtracting, we have to find common denominators. And we have a 13 and an 8, so we can't combine those yet. So we have to figure out what is the common number for 13 and 8. And this is where I put my denominators down here, and I write out the prime factors. Well, 13 is already a prime number, so there aren't any other numbers multiplied by 13 that give you 13. Whereas 8, we can divide that down into 2 times 2 times 2. So we look at our top row, and we have 113. We don't have any 13s in the bottom row, so we circle the 13. We're going to use that. We look down here. We have three 2s. Do we have any 2s up here? No. So we circle all three of these. We want those. So we multiply everything that's circled, 13 times 2 times 2 times 2, and that ends up being our common denominator. So our common denominator in this case is 104. So we have 43, and instead of a 13, we're going to put 104. And we have a 6, and instead of an 8 for 5 eighths, we're going to put 104. So now we have to figure out what did we multiply 13 by to get 104, and then what did we multiply 8 by in order to get 104, and that's what we'll multiply our numerators by. All right, so um, we multiplied 13 times 8 to get 104, so we have to multiply 1 times 8. So that gives us an 8 up here. We multiplied 8 times 13 to get 104, so we have to multiply 5 times 13 in order to get our top number, which in this case then would be 65. And we're subtracting. Now remember, we can't subtract here because 
Our top number, 8 minus 65, we can't subtract those. So this is where we borrow again. So we're going to borrow 1 from the 43. So we're going to change that. I'll put that in red here. We're going to change that to a 42. And we're going to take that one we borrowed. And it's only 1, so we're going to add it to our 8 over 104. Well, it's always going to be this number over itself because then we can add those two because they'll have common denominators. So this will end up being 42 and 112 over 104. And this will stay the same. We didn't do anything to this one. So now we can subtract 112 minus 65 and get 47. And we can take 42 minus 6 and get 36. And because 47 over 104 does not reduce, that ends up being your answer there for number uh, 24. So now let's look at number 28. We have a line segment. And that line segment is ABC. And it says the length of AB is 7 and 1 8. It says the length of BC is 5 and 2 7 And it's saying find the length of AC. So that means we're going to take the length of AB and we're going to add it to the length of 5 and 2 7 so again, finding common denominators so that you can add those. And uh, again, if we write our factors, uh, 56, 64. So those are factors of 8. 7 would be 7, 14, 21, 28. 35. This is why it's good to know your multiplication tables. Oh, there it is right there. Okay, so we're going to change that 7 and 1 8 to, we're going to put a 56 under there. So what did we multiply 8 by to get 56? Well, one easy way to figure that out is to look and see how many numbers we took. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, it took seven, no, seven numbers to get to our 56. So we multiplied 8 times 7 to get 56. So we multiply 7 times 1 and get 7. All right, we're going to change that to a 56. And what did we do um, to get to a 56? We multiplied 7 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we multiplied 7 times 8 to get 56. So we have to multiply 8 times 2 to get 16. Now we can add our 7 and our 16 here and get 23 over 56 and our 7 and our 5 together to get 12. And that ends up being our answer. 12 and 23, 56 long from here all the way over to there. Alright, so that's it for some help with the problem set 1.